Hey gang, uh, just a quick little, uh, another demo video. Uh, this is SDR console running on the 7300 with the HF Plus. And I'm going to show you what the RXDAP does on console. Um, you'll see that this, if you look at the S meter, uh, on one of the, the station here stateside, he's about an S0. Uh, it's not even registering on the S meter. And looks like we got some heavy fading. Audio's muted. And we have a Mike India Zero Alpha India Hotel. I think it's Dave. Um, Northern Ireland there. So um, I'll just do a quick little demo, show you what this thing does. Uh, it's quite remarkable. So he is, so he's, nah, looks like just barely trying to get, he's anywhere from an S0 to S3 in QSB. So if you watch the S meter on the 7300 and then listen to the audio, uh, it's, it's quite outrageous what this thing does. I don't quite understand why people aren't employing this. Uh, more people aren't. I don't think there's many people going down this rabbit hole, but whatever. I figured I'd just throw it out there. Uh, it's quite stark, and I think most people will agree there's not a chance in hell that you will get an Apache Labs or any other SDR full-blown transceiver to do this natively on their front end. Not even close, I know, because I have them. Uh, so what's he at? He is about... Uh, he's peaking in S3, S2, S0. So let me unmute the audio. I'll show you show you what's going on here. It was 45 feet. Oh, I think was, that was what? It was 17 feet across the way to this point. And there was a member in the middle. And I had a cabin on. And he's going to see fishing all the time when I was young over. See, so he's pretty much in S0, S2. And it looks like the station stateside have completely pretty much lost him. Uh, yeah, he's, that, he's that, right that, in the mud. But the water here is tidal, and most of the walkway out to the end of the, the dock platform turns to uh, mud low tide. Even at the end of the platform, so he's, he's actually beneath uh, the noise floor. Tide, <laughs> he's he's like water. non-existent. But at high tide, at the no, end I have the, the game. Five feet, and the... Uh, ramped up a little bit on SDR console. Only 15 inches. So I, I watch the tide clock. I can get in and to the uh, deep water intracoastal waterway uh, for... So if I kick out the reefer... And if I, if I hit that, uh, under the bridge that's right around the corner here, the, the marina, I could... Uh, yeah, he's he's right in the mud in the QSB. No, he's very good. Yeah, I understand. I understand. So, anyways, uh, I enjoyed the QSO. It was very informative, and I really like that uh, QDH. Uh, that photograph I'm looking at here. Uh, where was so your your home and uh, relation to that photograph over? Not a speck of noise, nothing, zero. The, the picture, a, uh, I look on the picture of the Bay Area. Is your home on, on this photograph over? And no artifacting either. Uh, is my home on, on the photograph? You mean the, uh, the, the, the drone view? Roger, Roger. Uh, so he's, that, he's the way down. The drone view is before we built the home, but it's right in the, in the middle. You see that island, and then if you, if you scroll down some more, you'll see the home. Uh, and in fact, one of the pictures shows an aerial view of the home when it was still under construction. Over. Yeah, got it now. Yeah, uh, Javi and I. Oh, yes, indeed. That oh, that yeah. took some wow. took some uh, six. Uh, our, our architect and engineer were to very skilled people. Over. Oh yeah, it, it, it was a custom home. We had a very good builder. It took a year to complete the home, and in fact. So he's still in a zero. He's not even registering on the ICOM. With the, uh, this result, he asked for permission to uh, photograph the house and put it on his website. So he sent in 
a professional photographer that took a lot of drone shots and all of that. Still and, enough, uh, zero. I need to. Uh, uh, I no want to call them this no morning noise. to see if I can uh, uh, put one of the uh, the still shots that they took uh, of the of the home from the drone on my uh, web page, since that's, uh, that's quite remarkable, uh, uh, isn't it? Not my uh, my property. Uh, he, he did a very interesting, uh, uh, the photographer he sent over spent several hours here, uh, uh, and it's a uh, literally a 3D tour. The threshold is actually at minus 90 uh, uh, with your on console, computer, you can navigate which is outrageous. Through, uh, That's basically wide open. Around the property and even inside so that tells the, you the what this RSDAP so is good. capable Friend, of. Hey, you're lonely up in the home of your house. All I can say is, I'll to enjoy it there, over. Well, thank you uh, so much for the kind words. Yes, this is it. Somebody carved me off <laughs> somewhere. Uh, so uh, I just hope that uh, the uh, global warming does not uh, uh, flood us out. So I got out. about uh, roughly 15 uh, dB preamp uh, running uh, the, uh, the equivalent the in will, SDR will console over the 7300. To, uh, preserve the, uh, it's a powerful uh, this Florida system. Coastline. Uh, we're 1.6 miles away from the coast. Superb. Uh, really. If there is a almost untouchable, surge, uh, pretty much untouchable right up, uh, in any here other onto the property as well. Uh, I would not want to be right along the ocean. At least transceivers are the homes with. that are uh, uh, most in danger, as you can well uh, well appreciate. And most of them are built up uh, to where the uh, the uh, the garage is on the first level, and then the living space is actually above the garage to elevate the uh, the home. But uh, if the land washes away, the home can wash away as well. MI0AIH from WA1GZY. WA1GZY. You guys have been called, we get back and forth sometimes to call a, a spring, a spring tide there over. Yeah, they, they, they have, uh, uh, I, there are, uh, tides, I forgot, and I, th I think you said a king tide, that I've heard of those, and, uh, occasionally you do get that, and I see the water does, uh, does come up. Uh, so far, so good. It's only come up about four feet onto the perimeter of the property, but I, I built the I mean, the, S the 7300 looks like there's not even an antenna connected to it. So that the first floor living space here. And there's the wife. H&R stomping stuff, stomping through the kitchen. Roger, it's definitely worth it. I can't see that on the uh, early spawn happens. But okay, so he's about an S2, S2. Anyway, thank you very much for the call. I enjoyed our QSO very much indeed. Very informative. Anyway, and I wish you best every three and have a nice Easter what's left there. You and your family uh, over? S2.5. Yeah, very good, uh, David. Yeah, we're just past 10 a.m. this morning on this uh, rainy and windy day here. So, uh, uh, again, uh, enjoy the uh, uh, balance of uh, the long holiday Easter weekend, and I'm sure we'll hear that signal on again. Always a pleasure, David. MI0AIH, cheers. This is WA1GZY in Jacksonville Beach. WA1GZY. Okay, Rich, have a good day. Sunday, please. Bye-bye. Kilo One Golf Mike Mike. Uh, Kilo One Golf Mike Mike, Roger. <coughs> yeah, hey, Dave. Uh, name is Steve over here in Vermont. And I uh, just wanted to jump in and give you a quick shout-out. Um, demoing a uh, RXDAP system I put together. Noise reduction, outboard noise reduction system. I've um, been listening to you for a while with uh, GZY, uh, uh, <laughs> uh, both of you uh, making it in here into Vermont. Um, not very strong, David, at this time, but I hear you. No problem there. And good afternoon. Over. And the call's Kilo One Golf Mike Mike. Go ahead. Kilo One Golf Mike Mike. Okay, Steven. You're 59. You're 5 and 9 here. And to Mike Kitty, it's nice to hear you here on a new bond as well. We work 15 and 20, and here we are in 17 over. Yeah, another another um, possibility of maybe getting. Uh, yeah, you're about a five seven five eight. You popped up to really sharp QSB, anywhere from like an S two to an S eight. <laughs> Go figure, right? But this antenna is deaf, anyways. I think it is. Uh, uh, yeah, another 
another contact of having the shorter wavelengths opening up is nice, a little activity, and it's almost like uh, having a working a QSO party. Instead of working counties, you work the same station across multiple bands there. Over? Is that all? Well, I understand there. It's been a while. Um, I'm looking out for the, the QSO party from, from Hawaii. That's all I'm aiming for. Over. Ooh, yeah. There you go. I have yet to work Hawaii as a ham radio operator. Um, uh, did get Alaska only once. Uh, but uh, yeah, Hawaii, that's a stretch. Um, how do you do Hawaii from there? You go over the pole or something? No, if I uh, go about 330 degrees here, I have to Hawaii. I have seven contacts at the moment on Hawaii here, but uh, there's only 42 of them ever confirmed over. Oh, gotcha, gotcha. Um, so you got 42 states confirmed. Is that what you're saying? Go ahead. I have seven contacts in total. Only only two of the stations have confirmed them over. Oh, oh, gotcha. Um, are, are you referring to just Hawaii? I'm a little I'm a little confused. I'm a little dense there, Dave. Go ahead. Say again, over. Are you referring to just Hawaii? Hawaii, over. Oh, just Hawaii. No, just Hawaii. The other the other states. I think I only need. I have the fifty states and the twenty meters. On the rest of the other bonds, I think we'll need one or two in each bond to fit the whole, the whole, the whole lot there over. Wow, that's fantastic! Uh, what What's your station, Dave? Uh, what do you got running over there? Go ahead. Roger, running a yes to the FDDX10 with an ACOM amplifier, putting out 350 watts here today. And my antenna is a six pound Yagi on a tower at 26 meters, and it's three elements in this bond over. Wow. Wow. That's fantastic. Um, very, very nice. Uh, now, do you live up high? Are you in a good location? Go ahead. You're in a very good location here. I'm actually sitting on top of a, a water table of our local river here in Northern Ireland, which is only 50 yards from my shack there, Roger. <laughs> there you go, man. What do they say? Location, 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 antenna, antenna, antenna. So you got them both. Very good. I'm not going to hold it, Dave. Are you going to stick it out? I'll get you on the cluster. Go ahead. I'm going to stick it out for a while a longer and uh, see how things work out there. But thanks very much for the call there. Wish you best, 73, and have a happy Easter. Over. Yeah, same to you there, Dave. Hope it was a great weekend for you and uh, look for you on another band. Uh, 73, thanks for picking up the call. M0, M-I-0-A-I-H, Kilo One Golf, Mike, Mike, 73. Thanks, David. All the best. Bye. Coolio. All right, mute this. And we are done. So I was pushing about yeah, three, four hundred somewhere in there. Um, very cool. But I just wanted to demo that. And uh, loud, right? He sounds loud. It's hard to believe if you watch that S meter. Uh, you'll notice also with the RXDAP, there's virtually no difference between like an S2 and an S8, S9. And that's the beauty of this system is that it will crush the loud signals and it will allow the weaker signals to come through at the same volume. So it uses a combination of limiting, hard limiting and uh, on, the, on the strong signals and a pass-through on the weaker signals, which allows it to drive all of the plugins. So, uh, seven three guys, we'll catch you later. Just want to do a do a quickie. Have a great day. It's K one GM. I'm Steve in the ditch in Vermont, and I got another video coming by the way regarding a double pole double throw relay I'm using to interrupt the audio on console. When you guys see this, you'll literally puke, but it works a treat. Um, and I'll explain why. I'm going to try and do that video later today. This will solve the issue if you're running a pan adapter tag teamed onto a 7300 or whatever radio. Um, a really quick description. When you PTT your radio, your PTT is usually plugged in to the radio, right? Whether you're using a foot pedal or some kind of uh, switch, uh, intermittent switch to PTT your rig. 
Well, the software takes about 25, 30 milliseconds for the software to ca uh, catch up to go into uh, key down. So every once in a while, I have this happen where I get a burst of noise where I PTT the radio and it takes, you know, 20, 30 milliseconds for the software to catch up and you get this little, tsh, this burst of noise. And that's really annoying to me. So I solved that with a little relay. I bought five of them for $13 and I wired, in, wired it into the audio line and I have it timed. I adjusted the timing so the relay hits quicker than the actual PTT on the radio does. So what happens is the relay kills the audio just before the radio goes into key down. And what that does is it complete, it, the software can throw a fit all it wants, but I'll never hear it. So uh, I'll be going over that. Very cheap, inexpensive, very simple way to uh, clean this up. And the way it functions is it functions exactly like a full-blown SDR transceiver. Uh, you don't get that on an SDR transceiver. Um, because when you key the rig, there's very, very little latency between the software running the rig. Let's say uh, uh, Flex, Anon, um, Sun. Uh, Flex I can't speak to because I don't have one. But yes, the Sun and the Anon, um, you never get that on those radios. It's only when you go to a third-party type system. And what I've been working on is trying to improve the third-party system and get it so good that yes, there is about 25 milliseconds of latency, but is it workable? Heck yeah. Heck yeah. So I've been working on getting this so tight that you literally can't tell the difference, which falls into, which segues into what I always say, what is the purpose of buying a full-blown SDR transceiver running more than 2.8, 2.9, 3 kilohertz wide? That's what you're paying for. You heard this. You saw this, and you saw the way it performs with a free RXDAP system running on the back end on the audio. It is absolutely, you can't touch this with a standalone SDR transceiver, period. You can't touch it. Try it. I challenge you to try it. I challenge you to prove me wrong. I have an Anon. It's great. Uh, but when you have a signal of S0, you have to kick in the NR2 and you will hear artifacting. You'll have to crack open the AGCT to a point where you will hear noise, artifacting, stuff like that. This completely eliminates that and also it pulls the audio up and out of the noise. Um, so you would think running the AGCT at, at minus 90 that it would be just absolute carnage. And yes, it is. You know, if I kick the uh, RXDAP system out, yeah, you're going to hear all the noise and the artifacting from the, the little bit of noise reduction I have on NR1 in console. But it's, uh, I'm telling you, if you want full control, full-blown SDR on the receive side of any transceiver, which will put it into a better realm. It'll actually far and exceed the capability of an Apache Labs or a Sun or a Flex. You can spend, you can do the same thing with an SDR Play. You can do the exact same thing with a, um, like what Dave M6 ENS uses. Uh, those are like $25 and they're superb. Console's free. The DAW is free. Uh, there's one VST plugin, which you don't even have to run that if you don't want to. It works fine without it. I just chose to pay for it. It's $25. You know, a little Sabre and Sound card and a little UM2? Oh, heck yeah. You're like, well, that's a lot of stuff. No, it's not. I mean, total investment is what? A little bit of wire, some cables? Compared to an extra $2,000? You know, a UM2 you can pick up for what? $35. Bucks. A Sabre is $8. You need a couple cables to patch it together. And uh, if you want to run the um, Denoiser Pro, that's $25. So that's, pff, what is that? Uh, let's see, 25 and 8, that's uh, 33. Uh, $53 plus the cabling. So let's say 60 bucks. 60 bucks, you got a front end that will smoke a $3,000 or none. Your choice. Plus the dongle. 
I should say plus the dongle. So, okay, so let's say you buy one of those things Dave has. Uh, $25 for that SDR. It's, it's awesome. I've heard it. It is excellent. Um, $25 for that. You got 35 so that's $55. Uh, uh, 55 and 20 so it's 25 for that you got 35 so that's 60 60 bucks 68 dollars for uh, eight dollars for the sabrent and 68 let's say 70 75 dollars you've got a system that will eat an anon for lunch the front end of an anon and those are three grand do the math. Bang for the buck. That's why I'm here, guys. Anyways, we'll catch you later. 7-3.